Hey, what's up? It's Triggy, and today we have another coding project. So this project is all about regression curves, and a regression curve, if you remember, is a curve that represents the trend of your data when it doesn't perfectly fit any sort of actual trend. So in this case, we look at our data, it is obviously patterned, but it is not perfect. So what we can do is we can find a regression line, and this is going to pretty well represent our data and allow us to be predictive. If there were to be a new x value, we could predict what the y value should be approximately. And this is super useful until you run into data that looks a little bit like this, which is very obviously highly patterned, but if we were to try to do a linear regression, um, this wouldn't give us any predictive ability. Because looking at the data, we can already see it already it looks loosely parabolic. Uh, in any case, it's certainly not linear. So the idea here is we're going to look through how linear regression works, and then see if we can expand that to include quadratic equations or cubic or whatever power that the user would input. So with a typical linear regression, you are trying to solve a linear equation. So y is going to be whatever your data point outputs are, x is whatever your data point inputs are, so those are givens. All you're solving for are the coefficients, the b0, your constant term, and the b1, your linear coefficient. This line should represent every data point on that line. That means if you pick this particular data point, x1, y1, it should satisfy this equation. Same is true for every other point on that line. Now, what we can do to make our math a little more streamlined down the road is put this into matrix notation. And you'll notice on the right, every single row has both B0 and B1, so we can actually pull that out into its own matrix, and then we get something that looks like this. Now, the matrix on the left, we can just represent as the X matrix, the one on the right will be the Y matrix, and the one in the center will be the B matrix. And then we can boil all this down to something pretty simple. What do we do if we have data points that don't exactly fit the curve? Well, the way to do this is to measure the error of each data point to that line and then sum the squares of that error, and that's something we want to minimize. Now, some egghead mathematicians figured out that the way you can minimize this error is by satisfying this equation here. So you'll notice we have the X matrix, the Y matrix that we had before, and the B matrix, which is our unknown. The T in the superscript stands for transpose. All that means is that if you have a matrix, let's take this example here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and you transpose it, all of the rows become columns and the columns become rows. Now if we isolate B using some matrix math, we can solve for B, which contains all of our unknown coefficients, using things that we know, X and Y. And then we're just going to have to apply transforms and inverses to them, but that is no problem. So then we plug it back in, we get our B0, we get our B1, and we get some sort of equation. What happens if we want to expand this? What if we want to get something quadratic or cubic or you know, however many, how, whatever power you want? And the way to do this is just to expand our X matrix. So instead of just being one in the linear term, if we want to make it quadratic, we could add the quadratic term. And for whatever power we want to make it, we just add that many terms and the math remains the same. This is going to expand the size of our B matrix. So instead of having just two values, B0 and B1, it's going to have a coefficient corresponding to each one of these powers. But those, again, are the only unknowns we need to be able to solve for a regression curve. So let's take a look at the code. We're going to have to import a number of libraries, and then I'm going to seed my random generations. And let's look at the setup. So in order to create a regression, we're going to have some data points that we need to re create a regression of. So I just made some random ones here. The x values are just negative 5 to 5, and the y values are going to be kind of close to the square of the x values. So this will be good to demonstrate something that is approximately quadratic, but not quite, but clearly not linear. So something we'll want to approximate with a higher power regression. And then we'll just print those to the screen so that the user can see what the data points look like, and then we'll request them to input what power they would like to use for the approximation. Here they can input if they would like to be linear, then they would enter 1, so x to the power 1, if they want to be quadratic, they would enter 2, x to the power 2, and so on. There is a way to make this more robust so that if your user inputs something that isn't actually an integer or is an integer that's too high or too low, um, it has them enter it again, but in this case we're just going to trust the user for the sake of simplicity. So now we're going to create our x matrix. Our x matrix is going to be a matrix with a number of rows equal to the number of data points we have and it's going to have columns equal to the number of power that we're going to have plus one, right? That's for our constant term. So if we had a quadratic, they would put the power two. So that would account for the quadratic term, the linear term, and then we'd add one for the constant term. 
Then what we're going to do is fill up all the values in all of those rows with the data from our input x. So for example, the first row would consist of 1, negative 5, and then negative 5 squared, so 25. And because it's going to be necessary in our equation to solve for b, we're going to get our x transpose right away. That is a function that exists in the NumPy library already, so we don't need to stress about that. And because we need our y matrix to be a column of values instead of a row of values, uh, we're just going to transpose the y that we have. So you'll notice our y is a row, we need it to be a column. And that's pretty much all there is to it in a certain sense, because now we can just solve for b. b is going to be that um, equation we had before, just translated into NumPy notation. And that means we now have our coefficients. So if we imagine that we are doing a quadratic regression, we now have a constant term, a linear term, and a quadratic term. So all that's left to do is display that under the screen. So what we'll do is we create um, a bunch of x's and y's to represent the regression, so the kind of predicted curve. So we'll call that x regression will be x values. We'll just make 100 values between our first and our last data point and we will create corresponding y values according to the regression that we just generated. And that's all there is to it. Then we're going to plot the data points, we're going to plot the regression, and uh, print it to screen. So let's see what that looks like. Here we see the data points. This is something that we could not represent well with a linear regression, and we know that it's probably going to be represented best by something quadratic, so let's give that a shot we're going to be prompted to ask what power we'd like to use, and we're going to say 2 for quadratic. And we see that this is a pretty good representation of the data points. Now, what if we were to have a different set of y values? Here we see the data points maybe could be represented linearly, but it's certainly an odd function, right, because it's coming from the bottom and ends at the top. Um, but there seems to be a number of intermittent curves, so um, here one could experiment. I'm going to try out a cubic function. In fact, I happen to know that this is a loosely cubic function. Um, but it's also interesting to see what happens if we start using higher and higher powers. The approximation will, in fact, more closely resemble the data points. You do have to be careful, though, that you don't start over-representing the data points. What do I mean by that? So if we were to enter something here like, gosh, I don't know, um, 10, then we get a curve that looks like this. Now, it's going to fit every single data point perfectly. However, it is more likely that there is some variation in the accuracy of each data point than that the curve is going to be something this complex. Right, so here we are representing every single data point, but there are only 10 data points, and the likelihood that each one of them is exactly on the curve and is supposed to exactly be on the curve is actually quite low. Uh, but it's fascinating to see that you can generate this kind of curve. If we go back to the loosely quadratic data points, uh, we can see a pretty extreme example of this where we saw before that we could pretty well represent these data points with something quadratic. But what if we were again to use something to the power of 10? So here we get a curve that exactly solves all of these data points, but is almost certainly not accurate to whatever the underlying cause of the data points is. There you go. That's the video. Hope you liked it.